Welcome to the 42nd Octoprint on Air. And this time I actually got the name right, contrary to what I did earlier without the mic being on. Uh, I'm your host, Gina Heuske. There is still no V in the name there. And yeah, you might have wondered why I held a towel into the camera. This is because this is the 42nd iteration of uh, Octoprint on Air. And I hope everyone can hear me now at least. I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing stuff on the on the audio thing wobbling around. Yeah. So um, with that little hiccup at the beginning, uh, let's get to what we're going to talk about today. So uh, this is the first of all first first live stream in a while. Uh, so sorry for that. I had a lot of stuff going on in my real life. I actually still do, but I still managed to find the time to do this today. Thankfully, which is why this is on a Tuesday and not on a Friday, because the Fridays are currently just packed with stuff. And I also started doing a four day week and I'm going to explain why in a bit. But yeah, so short outline. We're going to talk about the usual stuff. I'll tell you what I've been up to since the last installment of these. Then we'll have a quick look at what the next steps will be. I'll show you some of the stats. So some look behind the scenes. And then we have a Q&A segment, and this time we actually have six entries in the backlog that we are going to tackle, but I'll of course also keep an eye on the live chat as always, and uh, try to yeah, pick anything up that you might post in there, if you're looking this live, which all of you looking watching this right now are, because yeah, this is not yet a recording, this is live, which is why I forgot to enable the mic, apparently. <laughs> um okay so what have well uh, again what have i been up to uh yeah so mostly that has been 171 and 172 uh, as a reminder the last one of these was uh, done briefly after the stable release of 170 and since then we've released two bug fix releases 171 and 172 uh 171 went out on november the 1st and that yeah the primary reason for putting this out was uh, because of um, so 170 shipped with a new feature um, setting the, uh, a low latency flag on the serial port upon connection and uh, that feature was enabled by uh, by default in 170 and uh, yeah during the roughly three weeks after release of 170 i saw something like two cases where this being enabled by default caused issues for people and something is humming here. But it seems to be only here and not in the audio feed for the stream. So let's ignore that. <clears throat> I'm going to ignore the hum uh, because I hope you cannot hear it. Uh, yeah, so and, and this low, la low latency flag was apparently causing issues for two out of thousands of people that we know of and possibly more that we don't know of. So what I did was I disabled this flag or um, set it to false per default. So, so you can enable the behavior of trying to set the low latency flag on the connection now, but it no longer ships this way. And yeah, that seems to have solved it for people. Um, we'll have to <coughs> see what the issue there was in the first place, because the problem is uh, so 170 was uh, two months in a in, in release candidate phase, phase and saw something like 2,000 testers according to the stats, so probably some more who didn't opt into the um, anonymous usage tracking. So uh, none of those reported back with any kind of issues caused by this flag. So yeah, that was a bit sad really because yeah, whatever the problem there is is a very rare one, but sadly also a very problematic one because connection doesn't work at all anymore unless you disable this. Thankfully, there was uh, um, there was the the option to disable this, which enabled us to tell people, hey, try disabling that and see if it fixes things, and then know that it fixed things and rolling out stuff. And um, since I got some expl uh, complaints from some uh, affected user on how, or, or rather on why something like that was made default to begin with, I thought I would give some insight on how this <coughs> whole decision process was made, just so that people will better understand the, the challenges and the uh, yeah and the decisions that are involved in something like that. So first of all, I got this uh, low latency and uh, setting on the serial port thing as a pull request, which would have enabled this by default always. 
and it looked harmless enough. I checked it against my own printers here that I have access to um, and also read up on the whole documentation of the functionality there that was used and it looked like yeah, basic serial port standard functionality that was simply being invoked and used. Also checked whether would it whether it would cause issues with serial ports where this feature was not enabled, made sure that there was correct error handling and all that, and finally agreed with the person filing the PR to make it something that we could switch off again. So basically to reproduce the old behavior. And um, yeah, just in case it would cause any kind of issues. Then we had the aforementioned two months of a release candidate phase with something like 2000 instances that tested against this with this thing enabled by default. And we did not get any kind of issues back from that. Um, okay, apparently the hum is outside. <laughs> um, and uh, so it made it into the stable release. And then, uh, yeah, it took something like three weeks. So from the release of 170, which happened in I think on October 11th or something until uh, late October, so two and a half, two, three weeks, um, to see two reports all in all on the forum. I think one on the forums and one in Discord about this causing issues where we to uh, told people then, yeah, try disabling this and see if it fixes it. And then it fixed things. And that was when that happened for the second time, I said, OK, twice is uh, once too many. and um, looked into yeah basically rolling out 171 with this disabled and the question of course is why did i not just start out with this feature being disabled and the reason is simply i cannot default to every single feature that i built into octoprint to be off by default uh, um, especially not with features that might improve the overall user experience or performance of the application um, and uh, yeah, the reason for that is that a lot of users will simply assume that the defaults that Octoprint ships with are yeah the recommended settings and will never fiddle around with stuff. And some might even be overwhelmed by the amount of possible options they have access to. We already see this happen a lot when people are trying to build uh, the, the, their own firmware for the very first time, because there is a ton of config flags that, that, that they can set there and it is, not really intuitive for for people who are only getting started in the hobby and, and, and haven't had much experience with 3D printing yet on, on, on which features make sense for them and which don't and which will yeah help them re uh, achieve better results and which won't and stuff like that. So one of the challenges of my job is not only building features and debugging features and shipping features, but also finding sensible defaults for said features and trying to figure out how to configure stuff so it works for the most people out there, for the majority of all of you, without you having to touch anything at all and having to understand all the details and all the implications of you switching something on or off, but it just basically working as it should from the get-go. And sometimes it can happen that the default I find or I, 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 uh, decide on is turns out to not be the best default after all. For example, in this specific case where we had at least two printers out there which did not like this flag to be set on the serial connection and then refused to connect. And yeah, two printers out of several hundreds of thousands, but still two printers that did not work with that anymore. And so the feature got disabled again. Um, yeah, so long story short, <laughs> Uh, if you want to make sure that the defaults that I decide on match your workflows and do not cause any kind of trouble with uh, your setup, best test things, help maybe test the release candidates, that is always welcome. But most importantly, when you encounter any kind of problems, then please report them to me and do not come into bug reports or tickets that I've opened up to fix stuff and then try to verbally abuse me or something like that on a decision that I made and already rolled back on, which happened in this case. So um, just always keep in mind, I cannot fix stuff that I do not know anything about and you have to report stuff if you want it fixed. And I'm happy to always help and, and figure out issues and also roll back decisions or, or revert on decision, decisions that I made if they cause issues out there, of course, but I just need to know about that. And yeah, stuff will not fix itself. Yeah. Okay. 
two other things went into 171 and one was uh, fixing the wrong wrong, uh, wrong sorting to be selected in the plugin manager for the list of install plugins and the list of plugins on the repository so those were basically swapped and then were swapped back to the correct thing and I also fixed an escape issue where because I got reports from people uploading files containing a hash or a pound sign you know like the thing uh, the double cross or whatever you want to call it um, uh, they could no longer select them for printing or download them or anything like this, which was due to uh, yeah not escaping them properly on the on the on the uh, on the API. Um, that was not a problem before because uh, in older versions than one seven zero, stuff like these uh, characters in file names weren't supported at, at, at all, and now with one seven zero under Python three they are, but this led to uncovering this bug and. Then I fixed this bug in 171 and then made a, made a mistake in fixing this bug, which prompted having to roll out 172 only one day later on November, November the 2nd, because I, at some point I double escaped, du double escaped things and that instead then in turn then caused issues with Cura, for example, and other third party API clients who no longer could access certain files. So that was a lot of fun, but uh, that so far have been the only bug fix, uh, bug fixes that were actually fully blow, full blown necessary on one seven, and uh, there is still one issue uh, currently present in one seven because the blacklist is brokenish at the moment. This is so weird. This humming out there. Uh, there is a construction site just around the corner. It might be for that reason. Um, yeah, one other problem with 1.7, and I first thought that I might possibly have to ship 1.7.3 to fix that, because the blacklist is currently somewhat brokenish, but yeah, we are going to wait with that for 1.8.0. Speaking about 1.8.0, this is also something that I worked a lot on during the past couple of weeks. Um, first of all, I improved the template loading, because we currently have this situation in all versions up to 1.7, that if you have a plugin A that defines a file called foo and a plugin B that defines a file called foo, the name can clash. So you cannot have both. One of the plugins will load the wrong one, the one from the other. And that is suboptimal and something that obviously uh, should not work like that, but actually should work better. And so starting with 180 plugins will get their templates automatically namespaced. So any templates provided by a plugin will automatically be uh, namespaced with its identifier. So it will be something like plugin underscore plugin A slash foo and plugin underscore plugin B slash foo. And you can still load plugin templates from other plugins with relative names. So if, for example, you had a plugin C and you wanted to import foo from plugin A, you can, could still do that. But it will now generate um, a deprecation warning because you should be importing it with the absolute name with the namespace prefix plugin underscore plugin a slash foo. So that was one fix that I did. Then uh, what I also did was I modified the system info bundle slightly because we've now seen it a bunch of times that people said, yeah, of course I did run in safe mode. And then upon some more investigation, it turned out that nope, they didn't. Uh, or maybe they thought they did, but actually didn't. And the problem they had was actually being caused by a third party plugin. So Octoprint uh, system info bundle starting with 180 will also now include the date and time of the last system, uh, of the last safe mode run. And uh, that stuff will also be displayed by the bundle viewer. So if, uh, if someone accidentally or intentionally forgot to run uh, in safe mode, but claims otherwise will know mm -hmm. and hopefully be able to provide better assistance due to that. It's not like when we ask on the forums or on Discord or in the bug tracker, when we ask for a system info bundle, it's not to, you know, like annoy the people or anything like that, but to get everything that we need in order to fix the problem as swiftly and uh, completely as possible. And for that, we need the required information. Usually there are some exceptions, but usually the more information, the better. And the system info bundle contains a ton of stuff that we might need. Yeah. So what else? Ah, speaking of the system info bundle, I also noticed a tendency of people to still share the 
only the the short information that is displayed on the on the dialogue um and we already i already hit that in in 170 a bit better but uh, and replaced it with a big fat download system info bundle button here but people were still a bit confused about what they were supposed to do apparently so now the system info bundle dialogue that was the word that i was looking for contains all the instructions that you need like please download this zip file and upload it do not unpack it do not rename it do not strip stuff from it just download and upload it as is thank you and that will hopefully clarify some things yeah what else uh bulk plugin management so um especially when you're trying to debug some issue so you've you've had you've you've dis you've, you've encountered some problem and uh, you have run in safe mode and the problem was gone and now you have to figure out which of your 42 plugins are uh, the culprit and so far you had to yeah basically go through each and every one of them and disable and enable them in order to figure stuff out and that was a bit of yeah an annoying task to do because it involved a lot of clicking and a lot of individual restarts and all that and now you can just select a whole bunch of plugins and enable or disable them in one go and only restart the server once and such as a consequence as well so that should hopefully help with that and it will also make it easier hopefully for cases where you cannot um uh, where you cannot run in safe mode for example if you have some kind of printer that requires uh, a certain plugin to work in the first place but you are running in an issue into an issue um that is unrelated to the printer communication for example and we now ask you to run in safe mode and but you can't because you cannot reproduce it in safe mode because you can't even connect to your printer then now what you could do in such a case is disable anything but this single plugin in one go and reproduce the problem and that would help narrow it down already because then at least we are sure that whatever problem you're facing is either in core octoprint or in the single small plugin that are, that you are still required to have enabled in order to talk to your printer and not one of the other 41 that you have so yeah that was that then uh what else standalone up key dialogue so uh i don't know if you've uh, so if you're familiar with the authorization mechanism that octoprint has built in for a while now thanks to work of aldo hoban uh field of view <laughs> um to um yeah to to provide third-party clients with access for example cura so if you if you authenticate cura with octoprint you will be uh, asked for the IP of your Octoprint instance and then click connect and then Octoprint will open up and it will tell you with a little um, notification that Cura asked for your permission to use it and then you can say yes or no or rather I think it was accept or deny uh, or reject or something and uh, that is all nice but it still means that you have a small notification on a huge uh, UI that might be distracting in this moment and so i got a request from uh, the, the direction of the home assistant project by frank who asked if it would maybe be possible to have something like uh, a singular login dialogue that would allow this authorization where if needed you could log in and then you would just see uh, a dialogue that said hey uh, home assistant or cura or whatnot wants to get access to your octoprint instances do you want to allow or deny that and then you get this one dialogue and only that one dialogue not the whole octoprint ui but just this dialogue looking basically like the login dialogue and can run through this workflow and yeah so that was not difficult to implement so i did it this will be in 180 um what i also did was uh, the software update plugin now has some improved update and check buttons uh, because so far it was a bit unclear on if update all would actually update all or only those that you had um, the enabled the notifications for because you can actually disable certain plugins to notify you about updates uh, which is by by the way also something that what not was not very clear so far apparently um, and so that is also now better explained in the dialogue and um, maybe i'll just show you that might actually be easier than just talking about that so i'm going to quickly switch you over here to an octoprint instance and here's something else that i've been working on but first of all let's go here 
So uh, we now have this update all button here and in the drop down we have update all available. So if, for example, you see here that, um, do I have a good example here? Yeah, you see, for example, here that test uh, has the notifications disabled. And if I were to click update all now, it would only update Octoprint and bad visualizer, but not test in the virtual printer settings, even though they do have updates here, as you can see on the individual update buttons here, but they have this um, there you have this, this bell here that is struck through to indicate that you are not interested in these updates. So you don't get the notifications and you also don't automatically update to them. But if you actually want to include those as well, you can use this here. And um, the check for updates button also got merged with the force checks for force check for updates with circumvents the cache, um, also with a drop down. So everything is a bit more compact now. And there's also an explanation what all of this stuff does down here in the hopes that this will clarify some of the prior confusion around this functionality that has been in there, I think, since 1.5, 1 1.4 ish, something like that. Um, but apparently wasn't well known. You people should really read the release notes. <clears throat> Okay, and the other other thing that I actually wanted to show you here, you might have spotted this, which you have never seen before, because this is new in 1.8.0, or will be new in 1.8.0, I should rather say. And that is that we've, we've seen it a lot that people connect a printer to Octoprint, and Octoprint does not actually see the printer, either because they accidentally use the data, uh, sorry, a power only USB cable, which for some reason apparently are way, way, way more spread than I thought. Um, uh, or because, for example, the printer is not supported, or maybe the printer is also, maybe the controller on the, the USB controller on the printer is broken, stuff like that. And so far that led to them only seeing an, an auto port here and the drop down otherwise being empty, but they not seeing that and clicking connect and then getting the notification that no uh, candidates could be found or not no working candidates uh, could be found to connect to the printer and they were left alone with this error. Um, so instead, what it now does is it uh, it detects the situation. So if all it could do is offer you the auto port because it did not find any actual serial ports, it will tell you so. It will tell you no serial port found. Are you sure your printer is physically connected and supported? Try refreshing. You can either click this here or you can click that here for refreshing. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't help, please see the FAQ. And the FAQ will then um, show you steps to run through and try to figure out if your printer is actually being detected by the underlying operating system or not and all that. So um, that will hopefully help. It will also, as you can see, it will also gray out the connect button so you're not even able to connect uh, to the printer right now uh, or to try to connect to the printer which is not connected anymore. And as soon as it finds any kind of possible port here, even if it's just a virtual printer, uh, this goes away. So now it works, now I can connect. I can just select virtual or auto, doesn't matter, and it will connect. Um, yeah, this is a simulated Marlin uh, firmware development build, just ignore that. Um, and this also, of course, can be disabled. If for some reason you do not like that, or if it, uh, if it doesn't fit your personal workflow for some reason, there is a Boolean flag in order to disable that in a config, but it is not exposed in the UI. And I will also not expose it in the UI because this is one of these things where I think if you actually need to disable it, you should look into the documentation and otherwise, oh, that reminds me, I need to document this, but um, uh, you should look into the documentation and fix this and otherwise just stay with the, with the default because the default in this case is like, hey, something is broken here and probably not working like you expect it to. And you should check these things in order to figure out what is not going to work here because right now Octoprint will not be able to connect your printer. Yeah, so that is that. Now let me quickly switch. Oops, that was the wrong button. That is the right one. Switch back here. Uh, other things that I did were various bug fixes and improved error resilience and all that. So the file list selection wasn't working properly. I fixed that and uh, I got rid of some annoying warning on startup caused by disabled update checks in the config. And yeah, um, then we saw some issue on the forums where a plugin was able to nuke 
sending any kind of commands to the printer in a somewhat spectacular way, which was not properly error handled. So I added this error handling. So in the future, that will hopefully no longer be possible. And uh, then I also fixed the downgrade mechanism for the plugins and the blacklist processing issue that uh, I mentioned before, before, but that was actually fixed by Sean and I just merged this. And then there was also a bunch of other uh, pull requests that I merged. So in a nutshell, I've been really busy with 1.8 and uh, yeah, the past couple of weeks, which was um, when I actually jotted this down, I finally realized what I've been doing all this time because it, it just it felt like I was never going moving much forward because it was all these little things, but they add up apparently. Um, yeah, and what else? Uh, well, yeah, uh, lots of physiotherapy for my knee. Uh, you might remember that on September 20th, I had a knee surgery appointment and a plica got removed and part of my min of my inner meniscus got also removed. And um, that has been fun. Uh, it turned out to be way more of a burden uh, than I originally anticipated, I gotta admit, and um, the physiotherapy is helping, but yeah, I still, I just actually went this morning or this afternoon and yeah, it's it's still a bit smarting now, right now due to that, but um, uh, it's helping, I'm, I'm getting my mobility back, even though the range of motion is still not even remotely where it's supposed to be, but more on that later. Um, yeah, so that is all of the stuff that I've been up to. Uh, what are the next steps? So, uh, first of all, work towards 2.0. Um, I yesterday finally found the time to at least merge maintenance up to devil. Iron out all the issues caused by this. I hope at least it was all the issues. I, I still have some tests failing and I hope to tackle that tomorrow, but uh, at least it runs again because and, and starts again and stuff. So that is nice. Um, and now I have to also do the same for the DEFCOM refactoring branch before I can uh, take care of the final to-dos on that before I can merge it. Uh, and that is what I plan to do for the next two weeks. So this and the next one. And after that, which brings us to the next next step uh, on my agenda right now, is a vacation. Uh, yeah, don't panic. It's just my annual Christmas vacation that's coming up. And uh, with, by the way, with Octoprint's ninth birthday, birthday being on December 25th, important date. Um, yeah, I just need some time off again uh, between work, which is like crazy uh, already, crazy enough already to, to, to keep you busy uh, in a full-time job, plus the knee, plus the whole pandemic madness that is currently going on here in Germany. I'm slightly drained again actually like almost at maybe not almost like exactly the same as I was prior to my summer vacation so uh yeah some some time off is desperately needed and um I plan on reading a lot and gaming a lot and binge watching some stuff that I also have not had have found yet the time to watch and actually started watching the wheel of time um, series uh, recently on, on Amazon. Uh, I read the books something like 15 years ago, not all of them, but uh, maybe two thirds or something of them. And I forgot most of the story, but so far I'm really enjoying the series. So I hope that that will continue for a while so I can catch up on the story. Yeah. Okay. That was that. Now let's switch us back to the screen because I wanted to share some stats with you. So first of all, th there is not much to show off here. This is just the usual uh, behind the scenes look at all the data, which most of which you can also now access on data.octoprint.org by yourself. So the number of seen instances the past seven days, important here, not 30, but seven, uh, how many uh, the, the, the total print duration, uh, the printer state, which is always fun to see because 50% of all printers are idle at any given moment, <laughs> which, yeah, it matches my own experience with mine here. Um, Python version distribution, uh, printed hours per version, and yeah, also all in all uh, over time and the geographical spread. And I'm still waiting for something to show up in Antarctica, but yeah, maybe, maybe someday that would be awesome. Okay, but what I actually wanted to show you is uh, I got curious and I've been 
fetching the data exports from data.octoprint.org slash exports uh, into my local node red instance for a while now and i've been plotting the uh yeah the the scene instances over the last 30 days across time and i've been doing this for over six months now and that has enabled me to actually see some minor seasonal defect uh, effect here so if you look at the number of instances um across time so it started declining throughout june until august and then around september october november it starts climbing up again and the same happens for the total print duration here which also climbs up again now and uh yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to seeing this evolve a bit more um when it hits the one year mark for example that will be very interesting to look at and what I've been also been uh, been, been doing is I've been doing the same with the Python two and three data, so we get longer uh, information than the the sixty day cutoff that is currently on the on the full data exports, and uh, that allows me to tell you that uh, we achieved the two third one third cut exactly around oh for the first time actually there, huh? Something around here, uh, the the twenty third. No, not the twenty third. We have to look for sixty six point five twenty fourth, twenty fourth at thirteen hundred. Apparently, ah, it's it's going back and forth a bit, but uh, you get the drift. And uh, there was also one other thing. Now that uh, the Octopi image is being updated automatically through Customizer and also downloaded primarily through the RPI imager from uh, the Customizer built assets on the octoprint slash octopi dash up to date repository, I can actually log the download um, uh, the download counts of the image, and that is really interesting because. Uh, first of all, it allows me to see uh, some rough estimates as to how many downloads per hour that uh, I, I see, and I also see the total downloads per version here. So the current version is uh, um, uh, 118.0-172, so the latest Octopi with the latest stable Octoprint, and that has already been downloaded now 79,400 79, times ever since the release of 172 on uh, November the, uh, the 2nd, I think it was. So um, that is interesting to see because it allows me to get a more of a rough idea also about the actual number of instances out there versus those that have anonymous usage tracking enabled. And uh, that is fun to see. Yeah, you can, by the way, uh, this data, uh, I get this data from the GitHub API. So you can take a look at that as well yourself. There are, uh, yeah, you just have to check out the API to fetch uh, um, release asset download stats. And that is what I'm using here and piping it in. And thus seeing this, maybe reduce this a bit so you get a bit better of an idea. Let's try 30 days. Yeah, you really see some, some, uh, daily fluctuations there like there is a peak download rate usually around uh, uh, the UTC evening and some more action during the weekends which is kind of to be expected I guess but only slightly yeah but yeah that's that's fun stuff in my opinion to see um and uh John is just saying it's interesting for sure, but Octopi is not the only distribution of Octoprint in the wild. I know it isn't, but it is the most commonly used. So that is a good indicator at least. Um, looking at the, I'm not going to load that now because it might fail because it's a ton of data to shuffle, but I also track um, Octoprint instances and Octopi uh, and moment not 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 octoprint so octoprint instances number of octoprint instances number of instances running on a raspberry pi and number of instances running octopi which like there is more octoprint instances than 
Raspberry Pi instances than OctoPy instances, because some people also install OctoPrint on something else than a Pi, and some people run it on a Pi but do not use OctoPy. And um, there are not that many. <laughs> So the difference between people running it on a, on a Pi versus all of them running it, there is not that bit, bit of a difference, a big of a difference, and the same goes for the rest. Yeah. Uh, is there a way we can contribute to your stats? Question by John. Uh, if you can give me some kind of endpoint where I can fetch that, sure, I could add it to the plot. Um, I also plan to, at some point, make that part of... Um, part of uh, of, a, of a yeah more public hosted thing and not just my private node red but for now it was just an experiment that i started a couple of weeks ago uh, and wanted to see how it works and that has been quite interesting yeah okay so that were the stats that was a lot of fun pictures and uh, now let's get oops Hmm. Let's get to the uh, to the Q and A section, right? Um, okay. So first question, actually by John, uh, how much has your knee surgery and recovery impacted your daily life lately? Is there some pain or some moves during your working hours where it becomes a distraction? And I already hinted a bit at that, but just to go a bit into it more now. Um, so I'm at the point now where I can fully stretch the leg again, which is amazing because that was a bit of a literal pain point for a long while. Um, and I can also bend it to about 60 degrees as of this week. And I'm mighty proud of this, I have to say, because uh, uh, it, it stagnated. It's something around uh, 75 or, or something out of my own power and uh, something like 70 when forced a bit like in this picture and now I am at something like 60 when forced and out of my own power and that is pretty amazing and today at the physiotherapy I actually made it a bit lower than 60 even and that was painful but uh, great progress so that is pretty awesome uh, I finally can put on socks again without having to resort to tricks uh, some days though I still have to fight pain uh, usually some kind of deep aching because there is some, still some healing going in there. As I mentioned, some a part of my inner meniscus got removed and that is apparently taking some time to heal. There's also still some minor swelling. You do not really see it anymore from the outside, but you feel it and the knee is also showing it by its lack of bending. Um, and I got to say that when it hurts, then it is mighty distracting and really making it hard for me to concentrate. Um, on, and that obviously impacts my work. I, I'm trying to do my best there and just, yeah, take some more breaks, for example, put the leg up, maybe cool it, maybe warm it. It's, I'm still trying to figure out what the best is at this point. And uh, maybe also try to do stuff that doesn't need, need as much concentration, but it is tough and it is it is really frustrating so yeah especially during this stagnation period it was just grinding me down not seeing any progress anymore and not being fully mobile and yeah that was annoying anyhow so i recently had to get a new screen installed here because one, one i have i have three here um i had two uh, 1080p um 22 inch or something and one 15 inch uh, 1080p and the second one the second big one broke and so what I did was I finally got myself a bit earlier than anticipated I, fi I finally got myself a 4k screen 27 inch uh, moved my own old primary over to the to the to the secondary position and mounted the new uh, 4k there and yeah in order to rewire everything I had to do some dives below the the surface of the desk and and rummage around there and that crawling around under underneath the desk on the ground that was a bit of a challenge but i managed so actually the crawling around itself was okay because the only thing that i had to make take care of was not to put any pressure on the knee itself but uh yeah getting up again that was fun so any any observer would probably have loved their ass off and thankfully no one saw it um and thankfully this is not an everyday kind of thing and uh not that common anymore or anymore or at all thankfully yeah and yeah 
The thing that is driving me crazy right now is when people tell me that I need to be patient, but this is actually what I need to be. I need a ton of patience and that is tough sometime. And yeah, but still there's progress and I hope that sometime early 2022 I might actually be able to get back on the wall and take up climbing again. Um, I could probably already do some minor easy routes with the knee right now, but the problem is if I need to fall, if I need to jump, uh, I'm bouldering, so without uh, harness and without line, um, uh, I would have to catch myself with this leg and I'm not 100% sure yet if this would be a good idea. So I have to take it slow and wait and see. Yeah. And build up trust. You wouldn't believe how how quickly you lose the trust in your leg uh, just because it is hurt and not working like it should be and you're, like you're used to it. Yeah. Okay, another question by John. Uh, lots of pictures incoming, by the way. Uh, I saw you printed Visa mount options for your third screen. You remember the 15.6 inch one 1080p, which is right now up there in my upper right corner on top of the second one. Um, what material and which printer did you use? It's interesting to hear how the mother of Octoprint designs and uses printing in her own life. And I'd love to see here more of that. Ask and you shall receive. So, um, first of all, what is this visa mount we are talking about? Uh, this is it. So the problem with this thing is I, I got two new monitor mounts because so far I only had one and that was cantilevered a lot and not very stable. And now I have two. So one pretty much behind the primary and one behind the th uh, secondary and tertiary. And the problem with this mount is uh, it allows tilting, uh, not tilting, but uh, like in this, in this axis, yeah, like I can do this pretty much amazingly and I can turn it around and move it back and forth, but I cannot really tilt it like that. And for the third screen, I needed this because it is on top of the second. So it is like, like, here um from the perspective and uh so so i need something like a 20 degree angle on it uh tilting angle on it and the mount that i got didn't do that uh i barely could get it to something like five degrees and that simply didn't work for me so i needed an angle mount and this is what i did so uh it's basically just two visa mounts with uh, 75 and 100 millimeter spacing and an adjustable angle, a triangle clip thingy in the middle that then gets screwed in with um, two times three M3 screws and nuts. And uh, that seems to be very, very stable. Uh, I mean, I'm not entirely sure I would trust it in this particular printing direction because I, I printed the visa mounts lying down. So the layer adhesion is what's holding it pretty much in this direction. Um, if I would trust this to entrust this to a full blown big screen, but the 15.6 portable inch portable one that is supposed to be run via USB C, no problem. Uh, that pretty much weighs next to nothing. And now I have it at the angle that I need it, and that is pretty amazing. So, uh, you are right now watching me through my Lumix G70 and with a 20 millimeter uh, lens. And, uh, I have this mounted in a particular way, actually, um, because this was the other project that I did. I mentioned that I had to get a mount uh, for uh, two, two new mounts and, and one is now behind my primary and that was only holding one monitor, but I had a second arm. So I figured, hmm, why not put this arm to good use? And so I designed a Visa uh, camera mount with height adjustable camera slit. So I can now pull it down in front of the screen and uh, uh, swivel it and move it around and get it out of the way if needed and that is really nice because before I had one of these cheap selfie sticks with a tripod mount mounted to the back behind my my screen to the back of the of the table and that was yeah not the best solution and, and unstable and it was so, so far away as well if I needed to make adjustments to the lens and stuff and now it actually is sitting in front of the screen and I also had the same issue that I had with the upper monitor, because if I have it um, not at the height that I have it now, but have it sitting above the monitor for webcam purposes, then uh, it has 
slightly a wrong angle and I first tried a ball joint but that didn't work uh, it added too much height so I now use a simple 3d printed shim with a tripod mount and that is working wonderfully and flawlessly though right now I don't have it in use because this is how it looked just before I started this stream and uh, I currently have it sitting right at eye level in front of the screen so that the the whole frame is filled like it should be and works nicely and yeah it's just one screw that i have to open in the bag and then shove it up back up and then swap the the shim in again into the into the quick mount and then that's it and that is pretty amazing how well that works quite proud of this design might still change some things here and there but yeah and this also got me to uh, combine the uh, the laser cutter that you are seeing there behind me, which is a Mr. Beam Dream Cut, uh, Mr. Beam Two Dream Cut, and uh, the printed parts here, and also for the for the laser uh, for the third monitor tilt mount thingy, was um, printed on a on a Prusa Mark III that is sitting right next to me in PLA. I should add that, and uh, yeah. So and this, by the way, the the, the wooden pieces here are just uh, four millimeter. I think oh. I have no idea what the wood type is called in English right now. It's not birch. Um, we call it papel. I don't know what it is in English, but um, a light uh, and light both in in weight as well as in uh, as in color wood. But I plan to recut these maybe in birch and uh, recut the front in black acrylic so it looks a bit better. But yeah, I'm still not sure. I. I am still thinking about options. In any case, I need to change one thing about this because the adjustment screw that I use for, for locking it in, in the height uh, that is currently allowed to turn. So I got um, one of these uh, hex head screws and uh, plan to redo the front plate so that this gets locked in place automatically and cannot turn. And then the, 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 the thumb wheel on the back will work more nicely. But yeah, that's the current idea. And then because I was already busy with stuff anyhow, that was all from last week, by the way. Um, I also uh, finally solved the issue with this access point not staying put and simply designed a small laser cut mount and mounted it to my industrial shelf here. And by the way, the laser cutter is also running on Octoprint. <laughs> so this was all done with Octoprint, even though it might not look like it because it is a laser cut piece and not um, and not a and not uh, not a three D print. And yeah, John, plywood. I just don't know what the wood kind of wood that it the plywood is made of. So it's not birch. It's not oak. It's not. <sighs> you know what? <laughs> Let's quickly ask Google. Poplar. It's poplar plywood. There you have it. So poplar plywood. But as I said, I also have birch. Yeah, John also just got poplar. Yeah, it's poplar. Um, okay, what else? Oh, this is also something that's a bit older, but that is also something that I designed and printed or rather designed and built. Some parts are printed, some kinds of parts are laser cut again, and some parts are simply bought in a uh, in a hardware store. So this is my uh, pegboard mounted filament rack, and um, it's simply like something like uh, um, three round dowels of yeah, I think something like almost two meters in length, no, one meter sixty, something like that held to or mounted to the pegboard with three printed adapters which i probably could also have laser cut laser cut but um i simply mounted them uh, i simply printed them instead and, and because i don't know even why but i did it and then the the the, the dowels got inserted into that and now the spools can sit on that and i also have these uh you can see them a bit here um underneath here these are laser cut plates that have uh, that sandwich um, some bearings in between and the and i can change the width of these or rather the relative width uh, distance of these to each other and that way have spools mounted on bearings more easily while they are still still sitting on the same rack so they just slot into the rack and then the spool sits on them and moves 
I actually wanted to redo, redo those so that they have uh, another dowel mounted on the bearing itself, or maybe some round stock uh, with with uh, some some hollow round stock or something mounted on the bear uh, the bearing, and um, yeah, and also thank you John for noticing the Sanjay hex there. Yeah, that was something that uh, I'm still recovering from as well. For those of you who have not heard, such Sanjay Mortimer from E3D, one of the founders of E3D, died uh, surprisingly, suddenly, all of a sudden. Uh, and that made many of us uh, in the community somewhat, yeah, sit there in utter shock because that was unexpected and sad. And well, I tried to honor him here and printed the hex kindly shared by uh, Repcord and uh, put two magnets on the back and just mounted it there so that he may watch hopefully over above my over my printers and yeah but yeah sad things happen i fear and anyhow let's just move on to the next question before i get emotional um can the under voltage message in octoprinter be disabled I've been using this power supply for several years now without issues. It's especially annoying that I can't do updates due to this either, asks Andre. And he asked that in, in German. I translated it roughly. And um, yeah, so if the Pi is reporting under voltage, then the Pi is experiencing under voltage. So this is not something that Octoprint is uh, is deciding on or, or anything, but this is the Pi actually experiencing issues and reporting them and issues that lead to the Pi not performing like it should and being throttled and possibly even browning out. So no matter what the label on your power supply says or on the cabling that you use to connect your printer to it, your printer, sorry, your Pi to power, it doesn't matter. If the Raspberry Pi is reporting under voltage, then there is under voltage. I'm not making this decision. Uh, it, Octoprint is not making this decision. We are just looking at information that the Pi is providing and reporting on that in the Octoprint interface. And yeah, there is simply no room for discussion here. If the Pi reports there is an issue, then there is an issue and that needs to be fixed if you want a stable system under all conditions. And um, yeah, we over the course of the cup of the last years, ever since this was added, and even before already, we we saw a lot of issues from people updating Octoprint or any plugins they had installed, or even just installing new plugins under under voltage situations, which then led to corrupted installs and outright broken installs, and in some cases their Octoprint wouldn't even start anymore. And that is why updates and also plugin management are disabled when an undervoltage situation is discovered. This is not to annoy people or to, to bully people into, into finally fixing stuff or something, but this is actually just because we saw an increased su support uh, overhead and also sometimes verbal abuse come out of the situation of people not having adequate power supplies, updating their software and then breaking the software in the process. So this is why this is happening and this is also why this is going to stay this way um, so if you get an issue reported then you need to fix it the under voltage indicator also links to an faq entry that helps you with this and i can only say again that if your res if your if your power supply says it provides 5.1 volts and 3 amps then that just doesn't necessarily mean it actually does that the wiring might be faulty uh, the power supply might be faulty, the Raspberry Pi might even be faulty, it, but it, it doesn't change anything. If the Raspberry Pi says it doesn't get enough voltage, then the Raspberry Pi doesn't get enough voltage. And I really wish that I had not did not have to do this discussion like every three months or something like that. And, and people would just stop arguing with me about this message. It is annoying. I totally understand that. I've also fought with this myself. Um, and finding a power supply plus a plus cabling. So again, it doesn't necessarily have to be supply. The supply alone, it could also be just the wire between the supply and the input of, on the Raspberry Pi that is the problem. Um, 
yeah, finding these things that the in a, in a way that the pie is actually happy with them is tricky. I get that and can, can sometimes take a lot of work. I totally get that. And again, I'm not trying to bully people here. It's just that if the pie is reporting these kind of issues, then that means the pie has detected an issue and already taken Co uh, taken means against it, taken precautions against it. And that means it has probably throttled itself. It has probably um, shut down certain system resources. It might run unstable. It should do stuff. It, it could do stuff. It could brown out. It, there's all options on the table. The thing is a Raspberry Pi that reports under voltage can cause or can manifest all kind of different issues. We've seen people, uh, we've seen instances, we've seen uh, uh, pies drop off the, uh, the, the, the the web, the, the LAN. We've seen the web interface just not load anymore properly. We've seen installs fail, as said. We've seen corrupted updates. We've seen broken plugin installs. We've seen corrupted config YAML. We, we've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I cannot even think of everything anymore. And it just boils down to under voltage bad and under voltage needs to be fixed if it's reported. And there is simply no, there's simply absolutely no, no, it doesn't make sense to argue with that. That is what I'm trying to say here. So don't argue, fix it. I'm sorry for, to be the bearer of bad news and, but yeah, it that doesn't make sense to disable this message. This message needs to be taken care of uh, by fixing the underlying problem. Sorry. Um, okay. Then the next question by Wayne. Uh, it was a long question. I shortened it uh, a bit here uh, because uh, the, the more important, most important part is really here. Uh, probably 80% of time I got I go to start a print. I've uploaded, I get a pop-up window saying I need to confirm which filament I'm using. And this is where I already have to stop here because this is not core Octoprint that is doing that. This is some third party plugin. It could be spool manager. It could be filament manager could be something else I'm not even aware of, but Core Octoprint has no concept of a filament spool. And apart from telling you how many filament your, or how much, sorry, how much filament your, your print is going to use, it, it simply does not have any kind of concept of that. And this message is 100% coming from a third party plugin. So you need to take this up with the author of said plugin and not me. Um, as always in such cases, I can only recommend when you have some kind of issue with Octoprint or with Octoprint's behavior, test in safe mode. If the issue is gone, then it is not an Octoprint issue. It is something that is caused by one of your installed plugins and you need to address that with whoever wrote the plugin and not with Octoprint. Um, yeah. Then another question by Yanda who asks, is the new Raspberry Pi 02W powerful enough for Octoprint? Yes, uh, that is what I posted on the very morning of the uh, official Pi 02 reveal or, or release by Raspberry Pi. Uh, and thankfully, I already had access to this thing for a couple of months before and was able to test it, was also able to confirm that it would work with the current uh, Octopi version and was able to uh, do some, some print checks with it. And this is actually, I even have it here. Look at that. Uh, this is actually the very first Banshee that probably the very first Banshee that actually ever was printed with uh, Octoprint running on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2. And yeah, I was happy with the result. <laughs> I even attached a, a webcam to that at that point and measured the temperatures and all that. And it just worked. And so, yeah, the Zero, double, uh, the zero 2 is finally a version of the Raspberry Pi Zero class of devices that I can recommend for use with Octoprint. Get it? It's amazing. It works. And the only problem with it, of course, is it only has one USB port and you will need a hub if you want to connect a USB webcam as well as a USB printer. But yeah, I mean, there are solutions for these kind of problems, thankfully. Yeah. Okay. That was that, I think. And that brings us to the final question in the backlog by Aldo. Uh, now that you're getting some more stable contributions from other developers like Charlie, like Charlie Powell, so, sorry, that was not <laughs> me stumbling over the name, but me having trouble with my throat. Uh, how does it feel to also have the role of benevolent dictator? Apart from welcome help and having a sounding board, is it strange to have others that have a voice in your architectural choices? So um, first of all, I 
can't say that it is strange so far. I'm enjoying it actually because uh, first of all the helpers of course welcome. Uh, uh, but secondly, it's also pretty amazing to be able to brainstorm and I'm not only doing that with Charlie, but also with Jim and with other people who hang out in the DevCore uh, um, channel on, on the Discord server. And uh, yeah, that has helped me a ton over the past couple of weeks. Also in trying to decide something like, uh, if you remember, um, where to place this alert and if it if to place it as an alert actually let's turn it back into an alert so even so we actually have a proper reference here right so whether to place this text here or place it in the zero port or place it over the connect button or and, and then also the decision to or rather the suggestion to make it an actual alert with the with the with this red background and all that also came from someone on the server i'm just not sure right now who it Wars. might have been the EG or it was Lace maybe I'm not sure but um, one or the other was it um, yeah and uh, so that has been pretty amazing and uh, to be honest I also haven't considered myself in full control <laughs> of the architectural choices for Octoprint in a long while because uh, of this whole situation with third-party plugins and uh, and the API that I have to support and keep backwards compatible, which certainly limits my architectural uh, options in most cases. Also, I hope you don't hear the tolling of the bells too much here that is going on out there. That is something that happens every day at 6 p.m. sadly, and some days even also 7 p.m. and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, I cannot say right now that it is weird or that it is strange right now. I'm, I'm still really enjoying it. And should this uh, change in any way, I'll probably let you all know. No, I <laughs> hopefully won't. Um, but yeah, thankfully so far, we also seem to be pretty, in, pretty in agreement in most discussions. And sometimes I also get some nice pokes <laughs> along the lines of hey maybe you're overthinking it here and are trying to make it too perfect and we all know perfect is what was it again perfect is the enemy of done <laughs> so uh, that has also helped me a ton to not try to or not lose myself too much in the details of something but just make a decision and be done with it and that is pretty amazing all right so um that was all of the questions that i prepared uh now it is your chance for those of you watching this live in the live chat to ask if you have any questions and i'm going to quickly go through there if there was anything asked already linear actuator to sit, set position possible upgrade over complication i'm not going to add a linear app actuator to to move the camera automatically up or down that would pr definitely be overdoing it um uh, John says, isn't it better is the enemy of good? Yeah, that too. But uh, yeah, the other the, the thing with perfect is the enemy of, of done was something that also came up a ton in, in talking uh, when talking with Ben, who's also here in the chat. Um, yeah. John says, I always read the release notes. I just never have the time to play with the new features afterwards. That's good to know. At least one person who, read, who reads them. Uh, I, I have to say, it's not that much fun to write them. It always takes me a couple of hours. So um, to, to know that they actually get read is good. Uh, yeah. Ah, um... Ah, done is better than perfect. Thank you, Ben. That was the perfect, uh, the, the the right, the perfect, yeah, the the right phrase. Um. Yeah, but I don't see any questions that haven't already been answered. I think. Apart from phrase discussions going on. Uh. So yeah. Um. The next one of these will be ha will be happening in the next year, actually. So in twenty twenty two. Uh, probably somewhere rather towards mid to end January because of the vacation thing and it doesn't really make much sense to get online on one of these and then go, hey, uh, yeah, I didn't do anything. I was on vacation. So there should be some kind of work actually going on in between. Um, and yeah, that 
will of course also be posted to Patreon again and to GitHub sponsors so that you know when that is for those of you who are in the in the right tiers to to get notifications like that and I also see that I cut this and put it online for everyone uh, ASAP and apart from that uh, yeah um, it is still a bit early for this, but it was St. Nicholas yesterday, so I figured why not, and it is also the final one that I do before Christmas, so consider this our Christmas episode of this, not only the Don't Panic Towel edition, not only the Hitchhiker edition because of the, the 42nd, but also... Um... Oh, one question, still by John. Any 3D printed ornaments on your Xmas tree? No need for photos, just curious. Actually, yeah, I have a bunch of uh, snowflake designs that I printed from transparent filament and that I throw on the on the tree every year um, because they also glitter nicely when the when when they catch the light of the of the LED. Uh, and not no, it's actually not LED. It's actually still in, in, incandescent bulbs, but of the of the um, light strip. That was the word. Uh, but I think that I also have an octoprint ornament in theory, but to be fair, I haven't put it on the tree the past two years because I need a break from octoprint during my vacation. And even though it is octoprint's birthday on the 25th as well, during Christmas and, and while the tree is up, I, I just want it free of <laughs> any kind of um, tentacles. Um, yeah, but... So yeah, I can only recommend some 3D printed snowflakes and uh, I also, I, I still need to make one actually. Yeah, last year I, I did a laser cut uh, ornament, uh, which was a dog and some dog poop, which said 2020. So I probably need that for 2021 as well. It was just against the whole Corona madness. And a friend of mine designed that, actually the CEO of, of, of Mr. Beam designed that and sent it to me. And I was like, hey, awesome. And uh, laser cut that and sent it to all friends and, and, and such as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is definitely going on on the, on the tree again, just as a reminder of this of that year. And I think I might also design one for this year, either with a dog or just some something that reminds me of this year, probably some crutches or something like that. Um, yeah, or maybe some birds because we went to this bird sanctuary that was also also nice. Yeah, but that is that. Ah, twenty twenty one. That is true. That is a good pun, actually. Maybe I should look into how somehow putting that on the tree yeah but that that is that yeah uh so it is snowflakes and laser cut dog poo <laughs> on my tree <laughs> not not exclusively i also maybe that also counts as 3d printing so i i also crochet I uh, usually only do it around christmas time for some reason but uh i have some uh, little um little uh, christmas themed socks uh, some like this size in amigurumi style so all, all in spirals and also a snowman and i might also add a reindeer and an elf or something like that and uh, uh, yeah so i also put these up every year i might just post a picture of the tree on on christmas to twitter so if you are interested in the octoprint tree the official one without any octoprint <laughs> but a lot of uh, 3d printed and laser cut and crochet stuff then be sure to take a look at then but i think that's that then okay um as i said next uh, appointment will be posted on patreon and github sponsors again and uh until then because this one is the last one before christmas I want to wish you happy holidays and uh, enjoy some time off and hopefully with your family. If you want to be with your family, I mean, some people won't, uh, don't. <laughs> um, and enjoy the time. And I will also, between the years, as we call it in, in German, which is like the time between Christmas and New Year's, uh, I will also attend the the virtual uh, Chaos Communication Congress that happens this year again online because Corona and no no chance to gather eighteen thousand or seventeen thousand geeks in 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 real life in one in one spot without risking an enormous uh, super spreader event. Um, but yeah, I will probably bake some waffles because that is kind of a tradition that goes with uh, uh, Congress and yeah, just try to have. The kind of fun that you can have at congress without actually being at a congress which i really miss and i'm really looking forward to doing again but yeah at least one more year until i can have this feeling again anyhow uh happy holidays 
Happy New Year. Uh, stay healthy, of course, if you can, and get get your vaccination. Either the first doses or the third dose. My third dose is actually up on uh, December 18th, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and stay safe. And uh, yeah, I wish you as little filament tangles as possible and as much fun printing as possible. And yeah, just enjoy it. Take care. Bye.